although maybe there's all right well good afternoon good evening uh, welcome to our uh, school board uh, meeting this tonight um, we are calling our meeting to order and we will open with the pledge of allegiance so please join us in standing ready begin I pledge, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic, republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you again for anyone who is joining us online. That if um, you would like to speak to put your comments in the chat section and that is being monitored and we'll try to answer those as they come up and superintendent cole do we have any written communications no additional written communications all right well then we will proceed to our consent agenda which is number three on our agenda tonight uh, approval of our november 10th uh, board agenda as well as approval of our october 27th board draft minutes We'll entertain a motion to approve. I move that we approve the consent agenda, including the financial report and personnel report. I second the motion. Great, thank you for including all of it. Uh, any comments? All right, well, Tony, can we have a roll call vote, please? Member Brownell? Yes. Or Chair Nelson? Yes. Or our member Coleman? Aye. Member Wilkins? Yes. Member Richardson? Yes. Is Brian on? And Brian is. Yes. Member Dean Grange, yes. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, very good. We will go to number four, our reports. And our first reports tonight will be done by our middle school principals. <laughs> and Tommy and Barrett, we're excited to hear from you. So, North or South, which one should go first? Should we arm wrestle? Who won the last football game? Yeah. <laughs> I believe that was South, but Tommy and I are peaceful creatures. We're, <laughs> we're going to jump back and forth between each other. All right. Well, very good. We'll turn the time over to you. All right. Next slide, please, Todd. All right, so um, as the semester or the quarter was winded down, it, we felt it was very, very important for us to connect with kids. And so uh, we took uh, Halloween to be a great week to introduce Spirit Week. Both schools uh, did their own version of things. I'm not going to go through each one of ours, but I'm going to highlight our Tuesday was our 80s attire. We had great participation from our staff members. And one of the uh, fun things that we did for the kids is our staff members provided a picture of them from the 1980s. And we put it out there on a Google form for our students and students had to match teacher names up with the picture from the 80s. And then we produced a prize for uh, those students that participated and got the most correct. And so it was very interesting even for the from a teacher's perspective to see one another so that was great we also had a pumpkin uh, decorating contest that we typically do at the school but we did uh, ask students to participate from home they submitted videos of their um, pumpkin and a brief explanation of why they chose to do what they did and uh, that was uh, really exciting for the kids and, and fun for our staff members to see kids interacting um, it was a great week for us. I know South uh, did some similar things, so I'll toss it over to Barrett. Yeah, so we also tried to, and I guess kind of rewinding a little bit, the purpose of, of doing the North Middle School and South Middle School Spirit Week, uh, just an effort to try to get our kids to connect with some form of normalcy uh, with this funky school year. Uh, typically, um, with each week that leads up to Halloween. We usually do a spirit week that just focuses on student pride and, and school pride. Uh, and so we wanted to do that again and, and keep things as consistent as we can. Uh, so Monday we had squad day where you dressed alike with some of your friends. On Tuesday it was a holiday day where you got to dress up uh, with any of your favorite holiday themes. Um, Wednesday was your wacky hair day that students got to show off their weird hair. Uh, Thursday was fancy day. It's usually our lazy day where we let students um, dress up in their PJs and things like that. And, and our leadership students said, well, we are lazy every single day when we go to class. And so we want to flip it on its head and, and do fancy day. 
Uh, and so that was pretty fun for them. Uh, and then Friday was our Halloween costume day where uh, the first two periods of the school day, um, teachers got to, to nominate students in their classes uh, for who they thought was the, were the scariest costume, the funniest costume, and then the most unique costume. Uh, and then we put those students in um, kind of a wheel, spin the wheel, it was a virtual wheel. And then we created a short video with our leadership teacher and myself uh, that gave a couple prizes away. And all throughout the week on our Instagram social media uh, platform, we were doing different um, activities that kids could partake in throughout the week. Uh, and then tag, do a, do a hashtag uh, for our school and, and and keep as normal as we can with some of those those pieces. So pretty fun. Uh, and then I'll, I'll turn it over back to, to Mr. Blanchard, who's uh, going to talk about some other uh, fall uh, things that we've typically done in the past and how the secondary uh, choir teams from each of the three secondary schools uh, did something pretty cool together. So Mr. Blanchard, I'll turn it back over to you. Yeah, I'm not sure if anybody or all of you have been able to see this, but um, one of the challenges for our music programs is to have the, the kids compose and work together in the classroom. That's very hard to do remote. And uh, through a lot of hard work and determination, but also some really great programs that are available to our staff and our students, um, we're gonna play a, a brief uh, Harry Potter themed presentation uh, from the kids at the two middle schools and the high school. Um, we'll, we're happy to share the YouTube video. Todd, we're hoping you can play it for just a, a small portion of it to get an idea of what we've got there. And then we'll move on to the, the last part of our presentation. You bet, I'll go ahead and play that. Tanya, you, you just might be ready to turn down the speakers in the boardroom just in case. Everybody else, you have your own controls. Here you go. <laughs> just a, a small example of some of the great things that are going on in classes and some uh, are more challenging than others to replicate in a, an on-campus environment but choir doing a pretty amazing job there and um, we're going to finish up just by talking about something that's important to us right now um, both schools are in the middle of asking each one of their classes to uh, participate in a survey over at North. Uh, each one of our classes did this today, last day of the quarter, and there were a set of questions that all teachers had to ask about what is going well for students during CDL, what was not going very well, and how uh, teachers could help students be more successful. And then over at North, we had a list of about 10 questions that were not required, but were optional that teachers could choose from. And then the third section were uh, questions that teachers wanted to put up there and available for kids uh, that they thought would be that was specific to their class. It can be um, tough, um, some anxiety for some teachers about putting themselves out there and having kids comment back and share back with them. But we th uh, felt that it was really, really important to understand from the kids and from those that we work with every day, their thoughts on things. And um, this was not evaluatory. Teachers are not gonna share this back with us, but they're going to evaluate their surveys and learn how to um, continue the good things and improve on some of the things that kids happen to comment on. So Barrett did a few other things over at South mid uh, quarter, and he's gonna share those with you now. 
Yeah, so probably about five weeks into our conference of distance learning uh, into first quarter, uh, something that the high school did that we thought would be apropos for uh, us as well. Uh, just taking a quick temperature check on how uh, our kids are doing. And, and since we have never taught uh, you know, comprehensively in this model before, um, how, how do we serve our kids better? Uh, so some of the feedback, uh, so those questions that we asked, one, what have teachers done to make you want to attend class every day? Uh, we want that positive adult connection for our kids every single day. Uh, so we wanted to know what, what is it that teachers are doing? Number two, what have teachers done to help you learn the material? Um, we, we've got, we, I mean, I love our professional development time that we get to have with our teachers. Uh, and, you know, 95% of that in the past has been face-to-face uh, -face instructional practices. And so, you know, going 100% online, um, you know, we had a playbook, uh, but what we're kind of creating it as we go, and I think we're doing a pretty good job. So what have teachers done to help you actually learn the material? And then three, what's not working well in CDL and what should we do less of? So what some of our kids said very candidly uh, was great. So starting with what does not work well or, or do less of this, uh, when the teacher forgets to do the link, uh, and these are you know copy pasted from, from the, our, our uh, survey from kids. So when teachers forget to do the link, some of the assignments don't pop up or show up. I wish we could just go back to school, us two. Um, another student said nothing. It's just hard to focus in my house. Uh, when teachers make us unmute to answer questions, sometimes it's glitchy or very loud, or if you have a student that's in band, orchestra, choir, sometimes when the microphone on those students' uh, computers, Chromebooks, are not working super well, it can get pretty loud. Um, something else, take more time before a test. Sometimes it feels kind of rushed. Uh, we have another slide, if you could go forward again, Mr. Bloomquist. Uh, give us more instructions to the assignments. I don't really like how we can't really make friends. So the social emotional aspect of school. Note taking, it's just hard when you're not a fast writer. Sometimes teachers don't receive finished work and it goes poof. Uh, didn't really know what that means, but it's feedback for some of our teachers that what, what is it that's making assignments go poof? Uh, I'm good with how school's going right now. Some of our students did say that they're, they're really enjoying CDL. Uh, well, human contact, but I know that Right now, that's not totally possible. So we gave some of that feedback to our teachers of, hey, take it what it is. It's really candid feedback with what's not, what's not working well. Todd, if you could do the next slide. Um, what helps you learn the material? So also gave this feedback to our teachers. And again, like what Tommy said, all of our teachers are doing surveys this week uh, to see what they can be doing better and giving many opportunities for help. Our teachers are doing that. When we take notes, we do something with them good. You should be taking notes for a reason. Slideshows and videos so we can go back to it. They explained it really well. Having office hours, even though I've only attended one time. Uh, they're doing the same teaching they would in a normal class environment, only virtual. So that was good to hear. We're kind of doing the same thing that we're doing that when we have kids face to face. It's only virtual. Next slide. Other things teachers are doing to help learn the material, they explain things well and make us take notes. They go step by step and ask us lots of questions. They go through it multiple times and break it down. They explained it well and showed examples. They posted videos to help explain. And then one of my favorite ones, well, the teachers, they're just doing normal teacher stuff to help people learn. Uh, it was one of my favorite comments that some of our kids gave, one of our kids gave. And then lastly, what, what is making you attend every day? You just saw a really cool video that our Grants Pass High North and South schools did with choir, singing in choir, making a fun classroom and Zoom. They communicate and they ask us what we think. They ask our opinions. I attend class, uh, love this one, but I can learn and get a job when I'm an adult. It's also good to know certain things that could be useful in the future. Uh, another student said, I know my grade will go down if I don't attend. And then the last set of feedback that we got from our kids, they're just super nice. And I can tell they're doing their best to make things work. They're funny and do something fun to start class. Um, honestly, it's nothing the teachers are doing. It's my dad that makes me go to class every day. I think that speaks to the, the oh, huge yeah. load that we're putting on parents right now um, of, of asking them to be partners in this journey with us. I just get to see my teachers every day. Nothing other than I just want to learn. 
And so we'll end on that one. Um, for the vast majority of our kids, um, they just want to learn. So um, thank you uh, for, for reading through some of that feedback too. Todd, you could go to that last slide. Uh, we know that we have a lot of work to do to be opening schools back up and stuff, but our, our kids want it, they need it. Uh, but they're also pretty appreciative and, and are giving us really good feedback. So we just wanted to share some of that feedback and some of the things that are happening at North and South um, right now. And, and super appreciative to be here in these positions right now. Uh, love working with Tommy, love working with the North staff and obviously the South staff. Our teachers are doing a great job. Uh, but again, we can't wait to get kids back and we're, we're, we're really looking forward to that. All right, great, thank you. Any questions from the board? Well, we appreciate what you're doing. And um, I, uh, Mr. Sale came to my home to deliver a little award to my son, Damon, and I was just impressed with the fact that they would go out of their way to visit the kids and recognize them. And even though Damon wasn't there, I felt special. So <laughs> <laughs> thank you for coming. But I think that's wonderful and I'm grateful for what you're doing to help the kids uh, feel included. So. Uh, next up will be Director Evans, uh, Team Parent Report. Hello, everybody. Yeah, a um, couple of board meetings ago, um, I believe it was board member Brownell asked for a follow-up on our teen parent numbers. And the uh, we're here today to report to you. I have Diana Lewis joining us from Early Head Start. And she has two teen parents with her tonight that are going to tell you their story. But first, if you uh, notice the document in front of you, a uh, few pieces of data and information. We've been partnering with Early Head Start since 2016. Um, we're really proud to partner with them. They've, they've really helped us in the teen parent program aspect of our um, offering at Grants Pass High School. By law, we're required to support our teen parents when we become aware that they're pregnant and parenting we need to come alongside them and help uh, develop and nurture relationships with their child, provide quality child care, and support the teen parent as they complete their education. So those are some pretty big things that we're charged with when we have teens who are pregnant and parenting. Um, you see the data since 2016, there was a, there was a big drop in 1920. I'll let um, Diana kind of address our thoughts on why the number dropped so much. Um, in 2021, right now, this current year, you see the four plus, and I'm just gonna tell you that since I put this in the handouts, I am aware that we have at least two, maybe even three more pregnant and parenting teens uh, for the 2021 school year. As we become aware of them, we connect them with Diana Lewis. If you scroll down, Holly Hayes is our primary counselor in charge of our teen parents at Grants Pass High School. She does a great job of helping support them and their educational needs. But Diana really is the one who comes alongside of them and helps them with their living situation, their transportation, education, all of those things listed there to make sure barriers are removed. Head Start requires a lot of data collection. They have some pretty high standards for what they have to do. Um, so each one of our teen parents over the last couple of years, they have tracked, <coughs> excuse me, and um, where I just want to draw your quick attention to is the number of students who have experienced, experienced homelessness. Um, our pregnant and parenting teens, this is a real problem. Only two of those listed there that we're aware of did not experience homelessness. Uh, domestic violence is another number that just has to jump out at you to uh, acknowledge th uh, these young pregnant and parenting teens are dealing with some pretty significant issues. We schedule them into the teen parent lab as one of their periods each day. They earn credit for being in that teen parent seminar. Our goal is to get them graduated or to complete their GED. And you can see that we've had a, a number of students we've been successful with. Um, I'm going to let Diana share a little bit more of the personal side of it because she gets the fun part. She gets to connect with the teens and their babies and help facilitate the relational piece. And then she's going to introduce two of our students that are online with us tonight. So Diana, we want to thank you 
and I'll turn it over to you. You can unmute your microphone. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me here tonight. Can you hear me good? Okay. Okay. Yes, <laughs> um, yeah, this is, I've really enjoyed this. I started now with the program since 2016, 17 year. And that was our first year. And in our first year, we um, wrote a couple new policies like breastfeeding policies for these kids because I was so impressed with the first three students I had. They all fully breastfed their babies and they came in here in between periods and made sure they got their nourishment. And um, it was really impressive for me. And so we helped with the Grants Pass High School to write a policy for them to be able to come in the classroom and nurse their babies. There's so much that goes on in, um, in the teen parent program. Um, I've wrote a mission statement and I think it kind of says a lot about what we do. Um, Grants Pass Teen Parenting Program emphasizes the importance of raising children in a warm, trusting, and caring household. We provide hands-on approach with weekly education classes to empower our teen parents to be the best that they can be. Our program provides an environment where teenage parents can complete their education in a supportive, comprehensive school. We want all our children to benefit both from the direct services we provide and from the enhanced parenting skills educational success and education success of their parents. We offer great incentives to our um, to support our parents to succeed. And what I mean by that is we give out coffee cards every week they show up <laughs> and that's they love it because they get their coffee. And then also um, once a month we'll draw for the people who have good attendance and are here and they get it. Um, it was a $25 gift certificate, but now um, we have to change it this year because we no longer allowed to give gift certificates. We're gonna give them a $25 voucher to do something in our community with their child. So that's pretty exciting that we can do that. One thing that I've always felt since I started working with teens is that teen parents are just great parents ready to happen. And a lot of them, as you can see by our statistics, they don't have have role models. A lot of them don't. Some do and some are lucky and have a lot of good people around them. But when you think out of 21, um, 15 of them experienced homelessness, you know, they don't really have a lot of support. And the big one that's got me ever since I started here is the domestic violence, like what she talked about, um, the 16. And I'm seeing that even with the students that come in and work in our classroom and they get to talking a lot and they talk about things and it seems to be a really common problem with our teens right now is the domestic violence which makes me really sad so but I love working with them it's great and I have two students with us tonight one of them was one of the first students that we enrolled and the other one is our current student so um, I think first if Melissa if you're there if you would like to share a little bit about how the program has supported you it'd be great okay <laughs> Melissa, you're muted. So early head start has helped me and affected me in so many ways. Um, it gave me a safe place. I could express my worries of becoming a new mom and trying to get my GED while still trying to live as normal of a life as I could. It gave me my son, it gave my son Carter a safe and loving environment to develop in. It gave us somewhere we knew we were accepted and loved. Always, they always made sure to provide us both with as much support as we needed. I was able to get my GED and get a job with the help I received from Early Head Start. We gained so many amazing people in our lives that we, con we consider family. They were always open and honest with teen parents, always making sure to keep in touch throughout the day but most of all they became our venting boards our voice whenever we were being mistreated by school staff or our children's safety was a concern this program and these staff members make so much of a difference to these parents and these children they work with thank you melissa I think Maddie's up next, right, Diana? Yep, it's Maddie next. 
I saw her logged on here. She was here. Let me scroll. Hi. Um, so Early Head Start has helped me so much from before he was even born. Um, Diana and all them made sure I had all the support I needed and that I had all the resources that could, so I could take care of myself and him before I even had him. Um, she helped me, helped me so I could stay in school without, I wouldn't be able to stay in school without them. Um, and then uh, after he was born, they helped me because he was born this summer, so they weren't open. So they, Diana would come and uh, visit and make sure we were doing okay and we had everything we needed. She uh, helped us get diapers and swaddles and things like that so I can help take care of him. Um, once I started back in school, it uh, was amazing that I was able to still breastfeed him during class when, if he needed it and in between periods and I was able to do that and in a way that like not everyone in class knew about it too it was more like discreet. it was more discreet and that was helpful um and then when she did the t um parent meetings, I was able to socialize with other parents and see how they were doing and learn things from them also, which was really nice. Um, and now that I'm doing school online, it's really helpful because he gets to go be at school and I can focus and get done almost all my classes on all my work. And then after class, I can spend my time with the rest of my day with him and he gets to go to school and learn new things every day and just grow. That is wonderful. I want to thank both Maddie and Melissa for joining you today, Diana, and, yes. and a big thank you to you, especially you can tell from both of those teen moms what a wonderful impact you've had on their lives and how much you help our program and our youth that come to us wanting to finish their education and, and wanting to do the best for their, their children. And so thank you so much for what you provide for our teens. Yeah. I'd like to also just say that the staff that's here that are, take care of the children, they are all very well educated. You'd never get a better staff to watch your kids. They're, it's so safe. They all have their degrees and love children, and it's a great place to be. It's wonderful. Any questions from the board? I was the, there's a co-parent involved at the center. What does co-parent that would be the father or the mother, depending on who's bringing them. Um, it would be the other parent, like if because a lot of times, most of the time when we had kids, they didn't live in the same house, but there was two parents, both the father and the mother were involved and would come into class and be involved with their child. So are some of these uh, students that were serving, they're actually the male half of the parenting? Group. Yes, some of them are students. One of the, I mean, because one of our graduates last year was the dad that had his child full time and he graduated from high school last year. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, so, do we know how many um, teen parents we have total versus how many are willing to participate in this uh, program? I'm not completely, but I have been now starting to keep that a little, every time I contact someone, I'm writing it down so I can just kind of know that because I've found out like right now we have several, but they don't need our child care services. But I'm trying to encourage them to still have, still come and meet with me and, and get their child development and all the other type of classes that we can do with them, even though they don't need the child care. And you know why the numbers have gone, went down last year? I can I guess why they might have gone down this year. But. Well, there's not an exact reason, but it was, um, I work with a lot of other people like DHS and um, there's a teen parent board here in Grants Pass that I attend and the numbers were just way down and we kind of just thought maybe it's all this good support we have around here on, on um, 
birth control and everything else that maybe um, things were just really looking up for teen parents that, but now it's going way up again. So I don't know if COVID's having an effect. It might be a side effect of COVID. I don't know. <laughs> Um, are you, Diane, are you a District 7 employee or a Head Start employee? I'm actually a, a Head Start employee, but I also um, am contracted through. We have a contract with Early Head Start and pay for some of Diana's services so that um, we can meet the needs of our teen parents. But yeah. she is a Head Start, Early Head Start employee. And then I see, you know, I realize that so many of these um, can people have uh, instances of homelessness, but are they um, will are able to access the Imagination Library program where every child gets a free book every month? Oh, yeah, we do the one through Dolly Parton. Is that the one that you're talking yeah. about? Yes, we have that here for them if they, and most of our families do do that. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, thank you very much for this informative um, report. Thank you for having me. <laughs> I love this program. It's great. So, so this is Member Wilkins. So they they come in. They they use the daycare service, and along with that, then they have. It says that there's a seminar each day. Is that is that an elective? The class period. Yes, or they're getting in on their own time. They get an elective credit is what I understand. And they come in for a class period. And um, it's kind of four days a week is how many days they come. And so two of those days, one day we do like a parent education one on one with just parents. And then we have days where they actually play with their children. And I just play along with them. And we talk about different developments and what's going on with their child and if they have questions um, and hands on. And then on Fridays, we try to do um, when we did have Fridays, we don't know, but we try to do something fun, which is teens, just let them all sit and do scrapbooking and talk about their kids and, and talk with each other so they can share stories and um, help each other. I mean, like, like she was saying, they kind of built a family. A lot of the kids that started um, four years ago are all still connected um, and they all still connect to here. They all text back and you know we, we still have those relationships and some of them that didn't graduate because what we've been doing since we started is when they, once they graduate, we also do their childcare. They're, they get a priority pick with childcare so they can go out and work and get a job um, and start their lives without having the burden of finding a childcare. So it also helps them start college and everything else. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, Member Brownell again. So how many children um, are at the center there uh, besides the teen parent children? We have a capacity for 10 children in our on our side. That's children under three, three and under. And so typically we'll have um, around four or five that are teen parents. And then the rest we do community slots. And so they're in there with the kids too and they get to see the other parents and interact with all the other parents and have examples of parents that you know have been parenting longer <laughs> so that's how we do that thank you all right well thank you very much we appreciate your excellent work mm -hmm. thank you take care of these kids and the kids, and the kids. Mm -hmm. You. It's my joy. We got some pretty cute kids in here. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks again, Diana. Bye-bye. Uh -huh. All right. Well, next up, then, we'll have our law enforcement report with uh, Director Ely. Sherry. Hi there. Um, we were going to have Deputy Chief Hamilton and our SRO Stuart do a presentation today and I don't see them on on the meeting and so I'm guessing that they had an emergency that they had to attend to so that they couldn't be here tonight. Um, I'm on Sherry. Okay I'm going to turn it over to you um, Jim and let you go ahead and explain you know what your feelings are about what we're seeing in the community with potential teen suicides and also some other 
um, issues that you are encountering. Okay, hopefully this uh, is working. We had some issues and glitches with our system earlier today, but hopefully it's working. So uh, thanks for um, having me come in, share a couple of things. Just a real quick background. Uh, last month, uh, I was able to attend a conference put on by the FBI down in Chandler, Arizona, and uh, they provided an update uh, with what they've seen for studies, uh, specifically towards school shooting. It was actually a school shooting leadership forum. Um, and one of the questions that came up or one of the topics they brought up was specific about, hey, what, what's gonna be the effect after we see kids coming back into the school um, post this lockdown? And so there's a lot of concern that they have about the fact that one of the um, one of the issues that we know through uh, observing and, and, and studying the school shooters of the past have been the fact that they, they tend to isolate themselves. They tend to be um, more withdrawn. And when they do that, sometimes that causes them to go into that, that mode of, uh, of looking into this or doing more research. And so that's that's one of their concerns is that we may, we may see an increase across the country with this as schools come back in. They don't have anything specific that they can point to to say that we know that this is gonna happen, but it is a concern. Um, they, they gave us a full list of things to look for. And so what we're doing is we're revamping uh, the presentation that we do every year with all of the staff in District 7. Um, kudos to Sherry and, and, and the, the rest of the staff there because we were able to get out and, and contact uh, just about everybody within the school district every year and give an update on this. And I think that's huge because the biggest takeaway that they gave us was that it's that see something, say something, that there have been several of these incidents that have occurred, occurred where the, the individuals, the suspects involved in this uh, put something out. They, they leave a, a breadcrumb trail of what they're going to do, and oftentimes people don't report it because they just blow it off as being, oh, it's just so-and-so, or he's just acting goofy. Uh, but the, the bottom line is that they're leaving little tidbits and tips and evidence of what they're going to do, and if somebody would call on these or at least um, notify law enforcement, school staff, somebody, we can check into it. So that's the biggest takeaway that, that we have for folks on, on that side when we're talking about, uh, you know, a, a violent incident, active assailant type of a, a, a situation. So uh, a, as we move forward, uh, we're going to be updating our presentation with the current stats, also the current information that they, they provided in this class. Uh, we will get that out to all the staff so that way we can try to stay as current as we can and, and get this, uh, this new information out there. Um, we're also working with the Oregon chapter of the FBI National Academy Associates. I'm a member of that. And we're gonna be getting uh, one of the speakers who was um, the chief of uh, Coral Springs, Florida, which is the adjoining agency to uh, where Parkland occurred. He did a presentation at the class I was at and did a, an outstanding job of covering a lot of details and facts that, that will, I think help educate folks on where we need to go with this uh, down the road. So. Um, we're going to be bringing him into the state as soon as all this clears up and we can bring it back in. They've actually already uh, booked his, his time, so his airfare and everything is already covered. It's just a matter of getting a date to get him in. Um, you know, on the flip side of it, we, we move over to kind of the, uh, the concerns. There's been a couple of incidents that we've had in the last six months with some teen suicides. Um, pretty devastating. I was on one of the calls. Um, it, it's not something I think that we, we want to deal with. We're not really the experts on that. I, I would defer that to somebody from options or in the mental health world to really uh, probably give more facts on that. Um, we work with them very closely to try to work on that. I think the school does a pretty good job uh, of also interacting with us and with them um, to try to offer help as much as we can. Um, so I'm gonna kind of defer to that and, and let them kind of maybe in a, another session give you guys an update on that because I don't wanna go into an area that's really not uh, within our, our purview uh, and, and give some information that may, may not be accurate just through our experience. So, um, just kind of real brief uh, as far as where we're at, what we're going through, uh, concerns, the things that we're doing to try to prevent it. We're going to continue working with the staff and, and, and try to get to all the schools as, as quick as we can with this new presentation. Uh, highly encourage anybody that wants any more information to go to the FBI website. They've got a lot of good resources on there, not just specific to schools, but for community uh, as well. Um, 
final thing uh, with the, the, the studies that they've shown, uh, although some of our active assailant incidents are, are increasing in certain areas, we're seeing a, a downturn in the number of incidents that happen at schools. So uh, the belief is that what we're doing with the schools, with the education piece, hardening the targets, uh, making sure that we have people aware and looking for the belief is that we're preventing a lot of those through environmental design, but also a big chunk of them we're probably preventing by somebody calling something out and us getting to those individuals before they actually have a chance to act. So uh, that's a I think that's a great step to show that we're able to make some progress on this and, and hopefully prevent some of these terrible tragedies from happening, especially in our community. So open up for questions anybody might have. I know it's pretty quick, but uh, we just wanted to get that information out in case people are concerned or want to know if there's something specific that we're working on. I, I think that answers the questions that I had that were raised by the email we had earlier. So thank you for that. You betcha. And any other questions, feel free to reach out to us. Uh, obviously, you were... We're almost here 24 seven, but we're always available by email or phone calls and, and happy to answer any questions anybody has on this topic. Thanks, Jim. You betcha. Thank you. All right. Well, we'll next go to PE in a virtual classroom, but I hope that doesn't mean we have to do jumping jacks before <laughs> we listen to this. But, I uh, think that is a great idea. Okay, I'm ready. <laughs> Our... <laughs> Our, uh, our presentation last time to you was about music and we just want to keep up with the rhythm of the fantastic work our teachers are doing. I'm going to let Susan introduce the elementary set of things and then I'll do a little bit on secondary. Yeah, we just wanted to let you know what's going on in the world of PE when we're talking about virtual classrooms. And I am uh, excited to be able to introduce my friend Jana Pike because 25 years ago, we were actually teaching partners. We did a job share together. That was a long time ago, Jana. It really was. Actually, yeah, that was, my, oh, I'm going to be really echoey. It was my second year. My first year, remember, I did my, um, I took and, Lori Goodson's spot for one year. So it's so awesome to be back. Yeah, Gosh. so she, she started out in PE and then she uh, went into the classroom, was a great classroom teacher for us for many years, and now she is the PE teacher at Parkside. So I'm gonna turn it over to you, Jenna. Okay, sounds great. Thank you for inviting me to be here. All righty, so I'm good to go, right? Yeah, and Jenna, oh. you won't have controls. You'll have, you'll just tell Todd when you're ready to advance the slide. That's what I wondered. Okie dokie, guys. So, so obviously it's a little bit challenging um, in these times right now, but of course our main goal is to try our best to keep kids and get kids moving. Okay. So that's, I'm just going to show you some snippets of some of the awesome work that we as a um, elementary PE team have been doing together. We really are leaning a lot on each other. All righty. Oops. I need to get you guys off my screen a little bit. This is odd not having control. All right. So what it looks like. So for CDL and um, hoping that we're going to continue down the road here, we're going to change out of that for now. So fourth and fifth grades, um, two live lessons per week. So for instance, Mondays and uh, Thursdays, I meet live with fourth grade, Tuesdays and Fridays, I meet live with fifth grade. So hybrid, uh, we're responsible for posting one lesson per week for them to do at home because in a real world, again, we see them, we have contact with them two times a week. And then the other time, yeah, we have them in person. So that's really what's been driving us and helping us stay motivated. Us, when I say us, it's the six of us. Um, so looking forward to just being able to do that here in a few weeks, like I said, with all six grade levels. <clears throat> okay, next please, sir. Uh-oh. Okay, so, so the options then for CDL, so for our comprehensive distance learning, so they may follow along. Most of the kids, despite kind of some lag time, they will uh, just go ahead and just follow along with me as I screen share. I highly encourage them though to get on, have their lessons up and open. Um, as we are doing it together. Now for those, of course, those kids that don't make it to a synchronous live session, they always will have access, at least for a week or more, to the missed lesson.
lesson. <clears throat> they just won't have us guiding them through it. Next, please. I'm going to take you through kind of what a lesson looks like. <clears throat> so a sample, um, and we also we do this too for our hybrid kids. So really the lessons are primarily set up the same. Again, the main difference is they're doing it by themselves at home or hopefully with family members versus when we're at school for CDL. I am encouraging them and I'm not always doing the exercises with them. I'm also checking on participation. So typically a lesson for me and the most of us, it's word of the week. Um, kindness, flexibility, we've got offense and defense too this week. A warm up is typically five minutes. A main event could be dance steps, it could be yoga, it could be, you know, throwing skills, kicking skills, and a game on challenge, typically a minute to win it. Um, and then as far as credit goes, the kids click on and fill out an exit ticket or four or five anyway, they are submitting and they've got the option to submit homework by just text boxing, typing you know, their assignment um, answers or submitting an audio or a video. So they've got options there. <clears throat> so that actually I thought was supposed to be at the end, but yeah, maybe I switched it. So um, some of our challenges, of course, and I'm experiencing that here a little bit, it said my internet connection's lagging, so bear with me. So connection, attendance, participation, participation and engagement. I can honestly admit that I'm probably averaging about 60 to 70% participation. And I wanna say that that seems like it's pretty kind of across the board, but I tell you what, it's a whole lot better than springtime. It was maybe 20% for me. So I think that we're, we're capturing them a lot better. <clears throat> All right, so just a couple of snippets. Go ahead, um, if you wouldn't mind, Todd, <laughs> go ahead and, and click up on our rocking chair warm up. You guys are more than welcome to join us. Even sitting down, you can do it. We noticed that there are a lot of kids that were just sitting. So you have that as an option. <laughs> uh, yep. And then a main event. So the one off to the right is, you know, I know it seems a little bit primary, but it's just a quick glimpse as to what we're doing, um, just even at the basics. And even some of our older kids still get confused. Go ahead, let's take a snippet of that. Every side makes you the capital L is your left side. And I like to make a fist with my right hand. That helps me remember. All right, so left and right, left side of the road, right side of the road. I wear my watch on my right hand. All right, so a couple of great reasons why it's important that you understand your right from your left is when you are reading a book, it's important that you read from left to right. Uh, it also helps you be able to tell people the directions. If you need to take a left turn or a right turn, <clears throat> left turn or a right turn to get to you can go ahead and pause that for me. That's awesome. So one of the things that has really been a personal challenge for me is remembering to mirror the directions. So I'm sitting here going, nope, I don't wear my watch on my right hand. So that's been a real interesting switch in my brain to do that. All right, next slide, please. And I believe these are Jordan's gifts coming up, if I'm not mistaken. <clears throat> oh, yep. So that is my next endeavor is doing those. So it's just, it's awesome. So that, you know, you can just embed into a slide and his kids, I guess, think that he is just an internet, just a star. <laughs> so it's kind of fun seeing that. Next slide, please. <clears throat> and then uh, Trish really loved the gobble wobble dance, but Kirk, I heard you say, who do we have to get up and exercise? You absolutely can. This is a very simple dance. If you want to get up and do that, let's give uh, Carrie Daniel and Scott Carnes a big shout out for this. So <laughs> Trish has been practicing. To the side, yep. So it's sort of like the Cupid Shuffle. It's just the same set of moves just over and over. So if I can do it, any of you that might be a little bit concerned about your dance skills, you can all do it. And then this last one was just a little, a quick little, we're pulling in a little bit of literacy along with um, an exercise challenge here. <clears throat> okay. Uh, uh oh, that's not one to play. There it is. M -E -S -S. 
S1 and, uh, and D and E F S2. <laughs> So the idea was to try to beat Mrs. Pike. I think I managed to spell kindness about nine times within the minute. It was cute doing it with, with the kids live. Oh my gosh, how do you do that? So it's kind of fun. All right. And I want to say that there might be one more slide, but this is pretty much the end of my presentation. Yep. So just an example of the exit ticket. And then of course, it'll pop up into a form and then I can just take a peek at it and check attendance that way. And here's an example of just one of my homeworks. And so anyway, that's what we're doing for elementary PE and the only person that I didn't get to highlight was Mr. Williams at Allendale. So a big shout out to him because he's doing a great job too. So anyway, thank you again, Trish, for asking me to be back here and it's just- Awesome what you guys are doing, Jana. Really quick, I'm gonna go, uh, Jeff Houston could not be with us. He had a family emergency kind of pop up. Okay. And so I'm gonna just go through a few things. The one thing I wanna point out that both elementary and our middle school and our high school all do really well is they team together. Mm -hmm. You heard Jana give a shout out to each one of her team members. Uh, Jeff would do the same thing. The PE department at Grants Pass High School worked really hard. If you go on to the next slide for me, Todd, at keeping the priority, the priority during our spring and getting ready for this year, knowing that how important movement was and so really kind of taking the curriculum and setting it aside and focusing on getting kids up and moving so as the third paragraph says they really made it a priority to get the high schoolers up a minimum of 15 minutes each uh, class period without the need for a lot of extra equipment and space uh, to get them moving next slide We still offer a full range of courses at Grants Pass High School. Intro to PE is the big one that all, P all ninth graders are required to have. Um, but we've been fortunate to keep a full selection of electives. And within all of the elective courses for PE, as well as the core, they really have had that priority on movement being the main part of it. If you go into the next slide, I, you know, teachers take a lot of risks and these PE teachers putting themselves on video exercising, shout out. I, I, I'm not afraid to get up and exercise on video, but these guys, a few examples of the workouts. Yeah, Todd, play them. Just there's, there is sound, but it's, the sound's not important. It's that they're modeling for the students ways to work out, things to do, um, show, show them Haley. Haley's one of our new teachers out there and a Grants Pass High School graduate. So again, modeling for students, putting a challenge out there. And the kids have responded really positively to seeing their teachers on camera. So much so that they are, they, our students really are willing to turn on their cameras. Um, our high school is using Big Blue Button. And so other students can't see each other working out, but uh, the teacher can watch the student working out and give some feedback to the students. So that's been a really big positive in students taking a risk to demonstrate their workout at home. Next slide. Um, they still do cover PE curriculum. Um, so what they did, this is intro to PE, is they uh, outlined a, a different schedule for the quarter, trying to cover as many of the topics that they would for that PE credit students are earning. Um, and if you go to the next slide, it kind of details that when we had a regular class and a traditional school year, how they would go about doing it. But what they've ended up doing in CDL, the second paragraph is they kind of flipped things around. They're putting a lot more emphasis on fitness in their lessons. They cover the topics. They test on the topic on Friday. No, uh, open note tests um, and they want the students to see the information as much as possible so they're they're doing a really good job of keeping that moving forward um, next slide is just like you saw the gobble wobble dance and some of those fun things elementary is doing uh, high school is as well that video right there is just giving students different challenges, different th ways to get out and um, do some things. This one on the bottom, 
is a little challenge they put out there where Mr. Houston is going to demonstrate how to wad a piece of paper and shoot a basket into a closet. Um, I also heard about uh, taking spatulas. Uh, Haley Coulter was taking a spatula and demonstrating tennis skills. Um, so they really try to get students doing things with home equipment and uh, things that they've got easy access to. And then they're encouraging students to videotape, share their workout videos, making it really fun for the students. And they've had a pretty good uh, feedback from kids on what they're trying to accomplish in this virtual setting. The last slide is really a big shout out to all of our folks that support us. Um, you know, this is not an easy situation for our students, for our parents, uh, for our staff and community. Um, but we're feeling the love and support and we sure do appreciate our PE teachers and the work that they are doing. So do you have any questions for Jana that, or, or PE in general um, that we can answer for you? I don't think so. Thanks for playing the music. It was fun to see Gary go crazy. <laughs> Love it. Start with our uh, meetings with that music each uh, each board meeting. So much, Gary. So. Gary, let's do the gobble wobble challenge together, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, let's see. It's over. You and me. Gobble wobble. Get your chicken wings going. Turkey wings. Gary, I don't know. <laughs> <Yeah. Good. laughs> Thanks, Jana. Thank you, guys. Thank, thank you. you. You're welcome. All right. Well, great. Um, we'll go to our next uh, report, superintendent report, and our change in metric. Yeah. So in your packets is a visual of um, of the new metrics, and I'm going to do my best to attempt to explain them. Sherry and Danny might be the resident experts. They have had to explain it numerous times. So every Monday, the Oregon Health Authority sends us a two week look back. And it's the total number of new cases per 100,000 residents um, that they're that they're counting. So it's a full two weeks. Previously, they just looked at individual weeks, but we had to meet three in a row. So this is every Monday we get a new two week look back. And uh, as of last Monday, like everybody had heard, we get to bring everybody back because we were in this green column and our number was under 50 per 100,000. Well, the metrics came out yesterday and last week was really bad. So the two week total for uh, Josephine County went to, I believe it was about 56 per 100,000. And for our county, that number has, just has to reach 44 total to get us to that rate. Um, and so on Monday, we jumped into the yellow. What does that, what does that essentially mean for us? Um, so uh, if there's an explainer down on the bottom, but basically we've already been open K3. We continue to add elementary um, for, for a starter, but uh, as it reads, um, priorities um, should be phasing in on-site instruction. Uh, there's a clarification we're trying to see. Um, there's a reference number four is in small print down at the bottom. It's referenced at the bottom of this. And it has to do with um, what a four uh, over the prior four weeks. So we're we're going to get in a consultation with our county health department to say what does that mean? We've been doing K three all along, so transitioning to the four five should not be an issue. And so so really that's where we're at. And then this does allow us to add grade levels if we stay in that yellow zone. It does allow us to add grade levels over a period of time, showing that we we don't have case rates going up in schools, uh, and we're able to do uh, each phase uh, successfully. So that's um, you'll hear more in uh, an executive session around bargaining and what that what that may potentially look like as we're in talks with associations on how we can do this well and safely. So does it mean since over time with elementary schools can demonstrate the ability to limit transmission? So there'll be I mean if, if the county continues to go up, but the elementary schools aren't, then we can continue. Yes. We, 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 we show that we can manage the transmission rates as related to our schools. Okay. Sherry and Danny, do you wanna I'm I'm not gonna go into this other stuff. 
um, on the other side there. I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory, but um, but really, uh, ultimately, we were in green when the metrics first came out and as of Monday. And we once you're in one of those zones, you have 14 days to implement anything new. And so technically, we were green last Monday. We would have 14 days meeting till next Monday. If we had done all kids this week, we could stay with all kids, but um, provided transmission rates in school could happen. Um, obviously, you'll hear for a variety of reasons uh, why that was not feasible for us. Is this a rolling two week or is this? It is a rolling, it's a rolling two week. So every Monday is a new two week look. Questions on that that Sherry and Danny might be able to answer? Okay. But uh, just knowing that we're we're in yellow and we're, we're going to miss the two week thing. So. That's that. Actually, I was going to wait until the later, but it's addressing this. Um, it's just one person's view, but that we are going to do lots of transitioning. So rather than adopt a single model for where somebody projects we're going to go. Um, develop a process that is capable of moving back and forth whenever it occurs. And, and yes, and then that is what we're doing. Essentially, um, we haven't had in person at the secondary level, and you'll hear with the various complications of getting to hybrid at the secondary level. Um, we'll talk more about that in the executive session. Um, and so once we get, we know how to do CDL uh, right now, um, some good examples that you've seen, um, we don't see being able to metrics, things changing anytime soon to, it's either going to be CDL or hybrid. And so we'll, once we get that, we'll be a little more nimble to go back and forth. And then, so the other topic we've touched on in the past, um, which sort of re-triggered it for me was the comment by the student that's afraid to go back to class. And so even after, you know, we might get to the green and we think we can have everybody go back, there's likely to be people who still don't want to go back. And rather than treating that as a abnormal or temporary condition, just to be good at letting those ones that for whatever reason don't want to be in person swing, get their education as well. Yeah, and, and there are a, a variety of ways to address that. It's, we're still going to be using Canvas. Um, so students still can access. The challenge comes with providing synchronous instruction. If a teacher has kids live every day, how do they provide the synchronous instruction? We actually have some, uh, some K through three um, teachers right now um, trying to evaluate, are they capable, they're piloting, am I capable of having kids in front of me and using big blue button for the kids that are at home? Hybrid. So we're we're exploring ways to uh, provide that for students who may choose not to come back. And we're required to provide them an option. We have GP online. Um, don't know if that'll be a great fit for all of those students who may choose to just stay completely remote. So um, that's where some of the work is being done. <clears throat> Yeah, I guess I'm just saying there's a skill set that's being learned right now, and you really don't want to lose it. Um, two years from now, it might still be some very useful skills. Some of those things they're learning, some of those programs that they use for like the music program, stuff like that, are things. 
things that um, I guess I'm saying I don't want us to lose so that two or three years from now we can go where we could have solved that. Okay. Okay. Um, all right, any other questions on that? We'll go to 4.3, board reports and special concerns. Uh, I attended a meeting of the Mike Ways and Walkways Committee of the City of Princeton. And I've been on that committee for some years. Um, and they announced that the city uh, application for a grant to do um, sidewalk and uh, you know pedestrian work around Lincoln School has been accepted this time. Last time I looked it was this time it was going through. I don't have a lot of particulars. I think it was over a million dollar grant coming our way because those are our kids in Lincoln School. And exactly what will be done, I'm not sure. It'll probably be in the newspaper. But I think it'll be sidewalks, possibly an example might be Churchill, may not have sidewalks near Lincoln School. And it does have an uphill downhill problem, but if it doesn't have sidewalks, maybe they'll be installed with sidewalks. But this is for, it started with the um, Safe Routes to Schools, which has been around for a long time, but the Blue Zone people here hopefully pick that up and start the applications through. Uh, their group, and uh, the one we know most intimately is Valerie Lovelace, who is a retired teacher from Lincoln School and on the city council. So she's been right in the middle of this. And then I think the Blue Zone, the Diane Hooper, I think, was out of it, not now, but was, and uh, Dr. Uh, Cohen. Well, they started that new zone program, I think. So it's all good, but it's something we've been waiting for for a long time. And my understanding is the city has mapped out for future requests all of our schools to have safe routes and get grants for that. They'll apply for grants one at a time. So it's, it's a, something we've needed for a long time. You know, we don't even have crosswalks needed going across the street from the high school for kids to walk across the street going walking to school or walking home or even walking to the school bus so they don't have to go very far to get the school bus so, so it's we're really antiquated and now they've improved school street the intersection of seventh and school street we'll see is fixed for crosswalk and uh, safety safe routes for children and faculty and school board members. So it's it's just a real positive thing. And I hope the newspaper prints a very um, adequate article on that as a success story. We went to the hospital. Did you want to say that a second time louder? <laughs> I was just going to see if you wanted to say it again so that the paper would pick it up. Oh, well, uh, I think they kind of have their own plan made up on those things. <laughs> um, I wanted to um, men mention my congratulations to Sherry Ely on her award um, that I recently read about um, and uh, how proud we are. We seem to be gathering up awards every other month here lately, <laughs> but congratulations. Thank you, Debbie. And then um, I just finished a book that had been recommended to me um, some time ago by Victor Frankel, who was a um, Holocaust survivor and um, a um, not exactly a psychoanalyst, but um, in that vein of doctorship, and in Vienna, Austria. And he worked with literally thousands of suicide survivors 
And the name of the is in the short book, but I think it's Man's Search for Meaning. And I found it very helpful in thinking about uh, how we can help um, young people. I know this book across the nation has been um, a part of Holocaust studies uh, in different schools. And I don't know if our school does that or not, but I would recommend it for um, your perusal. So I think the OSBA sends out an email every day, which I get. And I noted today that um, there was a school district, I believe in Kaiser, they reported that half of their students are failing at least one class. Um, and so I don't know if it's possible. I know that the quarter is just ending. I'd be very curious to see where we stand as a district. Um, just more for a, from an academic perspective of, I think, helps us uh, see how the kids are really doing as far as academic progress. I know it's been difficult for many families and the kids, and we are uh, grateful to hear of all the wonderful things that are happening, but I am curious to know how, from an academic perspective, the kids are functioning at this um, distance learning model that we have, at least in our district. So is that something that we know, or can we bring back at the next board meeting? What are we yeah, doing? I, um, so, you know, we wrapped up this um, quarter today, and teachers will be finalizing grades on Thursday. Um, I could give you a quick report at either the next meeting, which I know we're trying to keep short, or we could do it at our um, December board meeting and let you know how the quarter grades were. I think I would like to piggyback off of that on my list. I also had attendance along with participation. If that means yeah, I can definitely do attendance as well. Okay, thank you. We're on a state of the education. <laughs> yeah, that's the one scribbling on the. All right. Um, well, Trish, I don't know that it matters if we do it next meeting or in the December meeting. I just um, either one, whatever. I mean, I think it would be quick either one. So. Okay, we'll see what we can put together. All right. Thank you. Any other items? All right. Well, we'll head to our action items. So um, 5.1, approval of second reading and final reading of revised policies and ARs. Our first one, 5.1.1, JBA, DBN, sexual harassment, and JBA, DBN, AR. We will entertain a motion to approve our second and final reading. Uh, I'll, I'll make a motion, um, Member Kuhlman, that those two, um, uh, be approved on second by the way. Thank you. Do you have a second? I will second that. Any further discussion? All right, Tanya, can we have a roll call vote, please? Member Brownell? Yes. Board Chair Nelson? Yes. Member Coleman? Yes. Member Wilson? Yes. Member Richardson? Yes. Member De Lagrange? Yes. Voice from on high. Thank you, Brian. <laughs> All right. Well, they're actually over here. <laughs> from the front. It's no longer from the wall. All right. Our next item is 5.2 approval and first reading of, re of revised policies and ARs. 5.2.1 JBA slash UBN AR. Any comments from the administration? Uh, you've heard of our Title IX officer who brought this this policy forward. Dan, can you speak to the um, 5.2.1, the second AR that supports JBA, JBM? Yeah, just briefly. So, uh, remember Durbin asked last last time we met, what's the difference between the federal and uh, the Oregon pieces of the sexual harassment piece. And so we were still working on this particular one, the federal piece of it. And so uh, it's the second half of what's required. There's some overlap in the federal and state um, sexual harassment definitions and things that you have to do, but there's also some separate things that you have to do. And so this AR makes sure that we address 
address everything that we're supposed to both on the state and federal level. Great. Okay. So I would move that we approve this. All right, so we have a motion to approve. We have a second. I'll second it. That would be cool. Do any further discussion? Okay, so I think we have a real call vote, please. Member Brownell? Yes. Or Chair Nelson? Yes. Member Coleman? Okay. Member Wilkins? Yes. Member Richardson? Yes. Member De La Grange? Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Brian, we were just commenting, your voice comes through very, very clear, and, and you must have a good microphone. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll move on to 5.3, closure of IDP slot. Yeah, typically, this got overlooked. We typically close the interdistrict transfer slots um, late September, early October, and, and all the fun we've been having this fall. This was an oversight, and so we need to officially close it. So we will entertain a motion to close this slot. So moved. Second, in, member Dealer Grange. <laughs> wow, thank you. Hey, jump in there. Any further discussion? Yes. All right, we'll call for roll call vote then, please. Sir. Member Brownell? Yes. Or Chair Nelson? Yes. Member Coleman? Yes. Member Wilkins? Yes. Member Richardson? Yes. Member De La Grange? Yes. All right, 5.4, approval of EPL easement at South Middle School. Yeah, uh, Director Ely, can you please share why we need this easement? Um, yes, the easement is to facilitate the installation of the two modulars at South Middle School. And so, Without this easement, we won't be able to have the power needed to operate the two modulars. So that would be no air conditioning. Or light or uh, anything. <laughs> All right, well, we better pass this one then. All right, we have a motion to approve the easement. So moved. Member Wilkins. Second, Member Coleman. Any further discussion? So we'll hopefully all be in favor of lights and electricity. So, Tony, you can have a roll call vote, please. Member Brownell? Yes. Or Chair Nelson? Yes. Member Holden? Right. Member Wilkins? Yes. Member Richardson? Yes. Member Bill Green? Yes. Great, thank you. Motion carried. Class one, approval of APT lease request. Yeah, we'll turn this over to Director Ely and give the overview. Um, we, as you see in your packet, um, we received a letter asking us if we would be interested in allowing at and to come onto the property, which is the lower field property between North and Highland for them to determine if that is an acceptable location for a cell tower. And they noted in their letter what the usual payment is per year for Something like that for a, a lease like that. It's about 11000 a year. And so the approval would not be of the cell tower. It would just be allowing at and to come in and do an analysis of the property. You don't have to approve this at all, only if you're interested in the possibility of a cell tower near North Middle School. Any questions for Director Ely? You say it's 11,000 instead of 900? No, it's 900 per month. Okay. Um, and how is cell reception in that part of for AT&T? Oh, yeah. they're, they're trying to build a West Coast infrastructure and more rural places. And administration is neutral on the. Yeah, but well, they're. Well, this is just for them to survey, right? To even survey. see if it's an option. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's put before the board. Um, we believe it's worth having them assess that, and then uh, if they uh, if they 
deem it a piece of property that they would like to pr proceed with the lease, then we would we would want to know we would go back and do a lot more work to find out what those specs are, what the uh, potential impact of that is for our property. Can you offer this to your any other questions? All right. Well, can we have a motion to approve the 18th lease request? It sounds more like a survey. Yeah, it's a survey. Should we change the wording to a lease survey as opposed to request? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Less. I move the, the district to allow ATP to do the survey. Okay. Motion. We have a second. Okay. Second. <laughs> All right. You talk to All right. Any further discussion? All right. Tanya, can you give us a real call vote, please? Mm -hmm. Member Ramau, yes. Or Chair Nelson, yes. Member Coleman, yes. Member Wilkins, yes. Member Richardson, yes. Member Gillagrange, yes. <clears throat> all right, great. Well, that's all of our action items. Uh, agenda six is our future meetings. We have our OSBA annual convention this Saturday, uh, from eight to four. And will we be getting? I don't have an email. They sent an email today, I think, and last week, and there's a link for you to um, go on for what to do to get ready for the convention. Well, they, I went on to that uh, I, that webinar. They said I, we should have received a link previously that allows us to set up the account, and I had not received that. Um, I had only received a confirmation of registration, and so I immediately uh, sent that to their line and an email to their helpline they responded within um, two minutes and gave me a link to activate my account and navigate the software that they use to facilitate it. After log creating my account and trying to tune into the webinar at the same time, it's relatively easy to navigate, but you gotta play with it a little bit. And I think they recorded those webinars um, that you should have links to. So if you don't follow up with them to make sure they resend to all of our board members. The link. So to link to create, act, to create the account, and then Tanya can try to hunt down a link to the recording on how to uh, engage in the in the application. You pick your schedule, and then you just follow it throughout the day. And you can visit with the exhibitors if you would like. Right. How do we do the trick-or-treat? How do we virtually do the trick-or-treat? Oh, swag. Oh, this, this will be an interesting I experience. Something, yes. A couple of different times. I got something today. Preparing for Saturday's event, there's a webinar. To, no, the 11th. Yeah, tomorrow. From 12 to 1. To learn more. Um, I don't know if that's something oh, that you can do other times than that. I, I tuned into that one on the fifth. I uh, didn't think I could get it, and all of a sudden it was there, so I listened to it for an hour. Um, they do a great job. I didn't understand much of what I was hearing, though. And they didn't have my address right or something, so I've been going back and forth with them. And they have an old email address they got from somewhere. And so just today, I finally got connected. I've got now I've got a special computer in case my computer is too old, which I think it is, to do the November 15th, uh, 14th, which I'm planning to do. So I'll either use this or I now can maybe use my wife's, which is in the remodel. And so I have a couple ways. But it's still kind of an exercise with the outdoors. I heard that the OSBA conference was going to do a blog. 
Thank you very much, everyone.